Hola amigos de Español Mil. I hope this video finds you doing well today. Uh, this video will actually be the first in a series of videos for the Spanish 1000 course. Um, each grammar video is designed just to sort of go over some of the things that you will see in the chapter. I know that learning Spanish is hard enough, uh, much less learning it online. So hopefully these videos will sort of give the online course an in-person feel and hopefully just um, answer some questions that you may have about these things that you're reading about in your book. That being said, these videos are in no way designed to be a substitution for reading the textbook or doing the assignments each week. Okay, You should still be keeping up with those things. These are just here to supplement and help you with those areas that you should be learning in the course. So um, I put on here greetings and introductions to start out with. Now, most people would consider that to be vocabulary and not grammar. However, um, there is a portion of this that is sort of grammatical in nature. So I just wanted to sort of hit the highlights with this. Um, in English, we have one way of saying you. So uh, it, that's just it. I and you. You and I. Uh, there's just one way. But in Spanish, there are two ways to say you. We have tú, which is the informal you. And we have usted, the more formal way of saying you. And you're wondering, oh my gosh, well, why are there two ways to say you? So uh, we're going to talk first about formal and informal greetings and when you might use each one in a current situation. So first, let me add just a little bit of vocab to your knowledge here. Okay, uh, You may already be familiar with this phrase to ask someone, how are you doing or how are you in Spanish? We say, como estas? Uh, you also could say, como estas tú? They mean the same thing. Uh, generally, you don't see the tú in spoken speech. You just hear como estas, how are you? This is the informal way of asking. You also have como esta usted, how are you formal? Okay, so notice you see the difference. Como estas, como esta usted, no S here, right? Como estas by itself, how are you informal? And como esta usted, how are you formally? Okay, so um, you also, if you want to ask someone's name, you see como se llama, what is your name in the formal way? And como te llamas, what is your name informally, okay? So, you may want to answer these expressions and say, my name is, for which there are three possible options. You can say me llamo, like me llamo Matthew, my name is Matthew, or I call myself Matthew. You can see soy, I am Matthew, or you can say mi nombre es Matthew, my name is Matthew, all of those work. So three interchangeable phrases to say my name is. Mi nombre es, soy, and me llamo. Take a moment, give this a try with your own name. Tell us what your name is in Espanol. Okay, very nice, very nice. Okay, you see some common mistakes here. We never say me llamo es, Matthew. This is an error that I see a lot in students' oral interviews by the end of the semester. People want to say me llamo es. It's just me llamo. My name is Matthew. Me llamo Matthew. You do not need the es in there. Okay, so careful with that. Um, you may answer these when you're having a conversation with someone, you're meeting someone for the first time. Oh, hey, how are you? Oh, I'm so good. Uh, it's, it's very nice to meet you, in which case we would say, uh, mucho gusto, nice to meet you, mucho gusto. Now you might reply to mucho gusto with igualmente, same here, or likewise. You might reply to mucho gusto, nice to meet you, by saying encantado, if you're a male, or encantada, which means pleased to meet you, delighted to meet you, encantado or encantada, okay? Uh, and then someone might, in response to that, say, oh, el gusto es mío, the pleasure is mine, okay? So, um, in conversation form, for example, you can see three separate conversations going on here. Maria Luisa, uh, here in the green and pink, is talking to Jorge, who is here in the red. They're having their own little conversation. So kind of draw a line here in the middle of your screen, if you will. Okay, and then over here you see Juan, who is talking to this girl in the wheelchair. They're having their own conversation. And then back here in the back, you can see Profesora Lopez, who is talking to Roberto Gomez. So let's start with these folks here in the front. Uh, and hopefully you have been studying your vocabulary last week. You do have a Quizlet for every vocab chapter where you can review your vocab words. So hopefully by the time you watch these videos, you already know your vocab. Uh, just sort of getting you warmed up here since this is the very first video. Okay, but you see 
Hola, Maria Luisa. ¿Cómo estás? So, hello, Maria Luisa. How are you? And she says back, if you read from left to right, she says back, Muy bien, Jorge. I'm doing very well, Jorge. ¿Y tú? ¿Qué tal? And you? What's up with you? How are you? He says, yo? Me? Oh, fenomenal. I'm doing phenomenal. And um, she, she says, okay, well, nos vemos en clase, Jorge. I'll, I'll see you later in class, Jorge. He says, okay, hasta luego, Maria Luisa. See you later, Maria Luisa. Back here in the back, though, you see a complete different thing. So notice these two people talking to one another. They used an informal greeting. They said, como estas? How are you informal? And y tú? And you informal. They're speaking informally. Keep that in mind. As we move over to this conversation, you see Profesora Lopez, who's speaking to Roberto Gomez, and she says, Hola, buenas tardes. ¿Cómo se llama usted? And Roberto says back, me llamo Roberto Gomez. My name is Roberto Gomez. She says, mucho gusto. Nice to meet you. Soy, I am, la Profesora Lopez. And he says, encantado. Delighted to meet you. So a couple of things to take note of. Again, we see an informal greeting over here with, ¿Cómo estás? And ¿y tú? But over here, we see a more formal greeting. ¿Cómo se llama usted? She's showing him res respect using the usted form. ¿Cómo se llama usted? The formal way. Um, we also see encantado. When he says delighted to meet you, he's a male. So he says encantado rather than encantada. Okay. And then in our last conversation, we see uh, this young lady in the wheelchair saying adios Juan. And uh, he says hasta pronto. See you soon. Okay. So. Why in the world are there two ways to say you in Spanish? Why is there this informal and this formal? Well, that's what we're going to talk about next. Uh, in Spanish, we use the informal form, also known as the tu form. And I'm going to write here in parentheses just so you have it, tu. We use this informal form, the tu form, when we want to speak with friends, relatives, or family, and people who are our own age, we tend to use the two form, okay? Whereas when we're talking to uh, elders, strangers, or people we want to show respect, we use the usted form, the usted form, okay? So again, two form, the informal form with friends, family, people your own age, the formal form with elders, strangers, people you want to show respect, and um, by showing respect, I mean people like your professors, your doctor, your coaches, um, interviews, that kind of thing. You're going to be using the usted form. Okay, so we're going to do a little activity here. It's going to require you to shout out, okay? So I'm going to show you a picture, and I want you to tell me if you would use a formal, the usted greeting, or an informal, the two form greeting with these, okay? So I'm gonna pop a picture up on the screen and I just want you to yell out formal or informal, or you could yell out two or usted, whichever you, you're, you feel better with. So your father's best friend, formal or informal? Good, hopefully you're saying formal here. There's multiple reasons why. Uh, number one, he's not your friend, he's your father's friend. Number two, he's probably your elder um, and you wanna show him respect. So multiple reasons to use usted there. What about your big sister? Well, with your sister, formal or informal? Hopefully you're saying informal because she's family, uh, maybe even a friend, so informal. What about this random dude on the street? He has a euro hanging out of his ear. He looks kind of goofy. Does that mean I can use the informal form? No, he's a total stranger. We're probably not going to use the to form with a random stranger. So this should be the usted, the formal form. Okay, what about your girlfriend? Formal or informal? Yeah, this one should be informal because you probably know your girlfriend pretty well. So you're going to use the two form, the informal form. What about mom's BFF, mom's best friend? Yep, same thing. You're going to be using the formal form in this case um, because she's probably your elder, someone you want to show respect. What about your boyfriend? Mm -hmm, good. Also informal in this case. Um, because you, you probably know your boyfriend well, he's your friend, obviously, maybe your own age, informal. What about your math teacher? Yeah, math teacher is someone we want to show lots of respect to, right? Because calculus is hard. Okay, so in this case, we should be using the formal form. Okay, I think you are getting the, hand, the hang of this. Um, very quickly, I want to move on 
to another area that we're going to be discussing, and that is the Spanish alphabet. The Spanish alphabet is a little different than the English alphabet. I have the English alphabet displayed here, which is just A through Z. You grew up learning this as a child, probably not too difficult. Okay. However, in Spanish, there are some letters that do not appear in English. And I'm going to type these for you on your screen. In Spanish, we have a CH that, that appears between the C and the D. We call this a CHE. You have an ñ, which appears after the regular N and before the O. You have a double R, the R, that appears between the R and the S. Oh, and I also forgot one. You have the double L as well that appears between the L and the M. Okay, so these are your four letters that are not included in the English alphabet that do appear in the Spanish alphabet. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through a slide and tell you how to pronounce each of these, okay? And then I'm gonna give you a little song that I think will help you remember these. So practice saying these with me. The A in Spanish is pronounced as A, ah, A, ah, say it with me, A. Ah. The B, B, so A, ah, B. The C, C, D, E. So one more time, A, ah, B, C, D, E. E, E, F, A, B, C, D, E, F, the G, uh, imagine you're walking up to your friend, oh, hey, the G makes a H sound, H, okay, the H in Spanish is my favorite letter, uh, H, H is H in Spanish, the I is confusing, I always tell students to remember that the I sounds like a, a young lady who's squealing, and it, uh, you hear E, okay, E, E is the I in Spanish, and E. The J, it's pronounced as Jota, Jota. The K makes a Ka sound, Ka. The L makes an L, L. Um, the double L in this case, though, makes a Y sound, okay, so I talked about how there's a double L in Spanish, so one L, L, two L's, A, Y, A, Y. We'll talk more about those in a second. A word that you just learned a second ago that has a double L, though, is uh, we talked about this word, me llamo. Okay, the L, double L, makes a Y sound. So that's why we say me llamo, me llamo. It would almost be written like this, llamo. Okay, me llamo with the Y. Okay, for the M, we have M, the N, N, the O, O, that one's easy, right? O, uh, P for P, P, Q, R, or if you have a double R, we have R, so hopefully you can hear the difference there. You're rolling your tongue there with the second R, so one R, R, and two R's, R. So, R, R. The S in Spanish, S, S. The T, T, U for you, U, V or U, V, depending on the country where you're from, V or U, V, W or W, V, either one. Uh, I grew up saying V and W, so that's what I that's what I say, V, W. The X is X, X. The Y, Y, and the Z, Z. Careful, the, the Z makes an S sound, Z. Okay, all right, so we are talking about these letters that don't appear in the alphabet, like the CH makes a CHE, the double L, EYE, the N with a tilde, ENYE, and then the double R, R. So those are your extra letters, okay? Now, it would be very boring to just go through those and tell you just to memorize them and move on, right? So we have a cool song that is going to help you remember these. So it's actually going to sing it to you. I would ask you to sing along. It will say it the first time, and then you get to repeat, okay? We're going to hear it a total of three times, and I just want you to give this some practice.
is where you're going to sing it back. So she said, A, B, C, C, D, E, F, A. And I want you to sing it back. A, B, C, C, D, E, F, A. A, B, C, C, D, E, F, A. Hey, A, J, E, Ho, D, K. Hey, A, J, E, Ho, D, K. Hey, A, J, E, Ho, D, K. Ele. 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 Eye. 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 Eme. Eme. Enye. Ope. So you heard there, Eme. Ene. Enye. Ope. Q R R S T. Q R R S T. Q R R S T. U V W X. U V W X. U V W X. Y. 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 Zeta. Okay, so now you've heard the whole alphabet there from A to Z. Now, I know it seems a little corny to make you sing, uh, but you'll appreciate that you did in just a moment, okay? So you're going to hear this two more times. I want you to go through and sing it with them, okay? And they'll gradually speed up the speed a bit. So give this a try. Zeta, yo sé el alfabeto. Ole! students in my in-person Spanish class sing this before they're allowed to leave for the day, but I can't force you to do that in an online class, unfortunately. But uh, I would encourage you to practice this, sing it. It makes a great shower jam if you need something to listen to in the shower. Um, if you're interested in getting back to this song, uh, just make sure you type, you can Google Spanish alphabet song, and it's usually the first thing that, type, that pops up. Uh, it's on YouTube, um, so very easy to access there. Okay, so uh, that being said, this week on um, your assignments, you're going to be given something kind of like this. It's going to give you um, something written out, and it could be a name, it could be a phrase, some kind of word. So this activity is titled, ¿Qué palabra es? What word is it? And I want you to write out the word that you hear, okay? So you kind of have to do it one letter at a time. So we start out, and I'm going to take this line out of the way. Okay, we start out here with... S-A, which hopefully you know is S, okay, so S-A, we have an E, which is an E, N-Y-E, N with a little squiggly, O, still an O, and R, which is R. So you get the word Señor, which you know means Mr. Okay, our second word, I'll do one more example with you here. Our second word, you see he is G, R, R, A, A, C, C, E, I, A, A, and S, A. What word do you get? Gracias. Thank you. Okay. I want you to take a moment, pause your audio, and give numbers three, four, and five a try for me. Okay. Now that you've had a second to pause, you see 
this written out here. You see pe, which is a p, ere, r, u, u, e, i, b, 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 and a, e. So you end up with prueba. P, R, U, E, B, A. Okay. As you keep moving here, you also see in this one, M, A, which is an M, O, still an O, C, C, H, H, E, I, L, L, and A, A. So you get mochila here, which is a backpack, mochila. Okay. And then our last one here, F A, it's an F, A, A, S A, S, C, C, E, I, N A, N, A, N A, N again, T, a T, and A. So you get fascinante, which means fascinating. Fascinante, okay? So hopefully uh, this activity has helped a little bit. You will have to do something like this on My Spanish Lab. Okay, you also may hear these in an auditory format, um, maybe on an exam or something. Hint, hint. Okay, so um, I'm going to do a little activity with you here where you're going to hear um, this woman who is spelling out names, people's names. Okay, and you have to write the name that you hear. So I want you to actually get out a uh, sticky note, piece of paper, something where you can write, okay? You need a writing utensil and something to write on. Um, okay, so I'm gonna play the audio, which will have a person speaking, and you just need to write the name that you hear, okay? Let's try one together. A-L-A-J-A-N-D-A-R-O. Okay, this is usually the point in the semester where students go, whoa, 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 that was so fast. Okay, so uh, I'm going to read it for you one more time, a little slower, to see if you can get the name. Okay, so you heard A, L, E, J, A, N, D, R, O. Okay, so one more time. A, L, E, J, A, N, D, R, O. Okay, you should have the name Alejandro written down for number one. Okay, Alejandro. Okay, let's try another one here. A, D, U, A, R, D, O. All right, so you heard E, D, U, A, R, D, O. One more time. E, D, U, A, R, D, O. You should have written out E, D, U, A, R, D, O. Eduardo, Eduardo. Okay, let's try another one here. F A B I A N A. Okay, you heard F A A B I A N A. One more time. F A A B I a, N, A. So you should have the name F, A, B, A, 
F-A-B-I-A-N-A. Fabiana. Fabiana. Okay, try one more. M-I-C-H-A-L-L-A. Okay, we'll back that up for you one more time. L L Sorry. H A L L A. I didn't back up quite far enough. M I C H A L L A. Okay, so one more time for you. M I C H A L L A. You might also um, say it a different way. You could also say M I C H A A J A. Okay, either way. You should get the name Michelle. Okay. All right. So hopefully you're feeling good on that. Um, that covers our alphabet portion of the video. Now we're going to look at your numbers from 0 through 100. Okay. So as we take a look at your numbers in Spanish, most of you, maybe from watching Dora the Explorer or maybe you learned this in elementary school or whatever it is, you probably know your numbers from 0 through 10. Uh, just in case, we'll go through. Cero is zero. Cero, okay, so just like zero, but with a C instead of a Z. Cero. Uno, for one, just like the card game, uno. Okay, so cero, uno, dos, tres. So zero, one, two, three. Four is cuatro. Five is cinco. Six is seis. Seven, siete. Eight. Ocho, nine, nueve, and then finally ten in Spanish is diez. Okay, so these are your numbers from zero through ten. Cero, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. A lot of us already um, understand those and maybe already have those in our brains. As we look at our next set of words here, we're going to go from 10 through 19. Um, now, numbers 11 through 15, you just kind of have to remember. Okay, 11 through 15, you just kind of have to memorize. So, for 11, we have once. O-N-C-E, once. It looks like once in English, but it's pronounced once. Okay, for 12, we have doce. Doce, so dos, two, and doce, 12. Careful with those. For 13, trece, so three, tres, and trece, 13. Cuatro was four. You can see catorce, 14, and cinco, five, quince, 15. Okay, so once, doce, trece, catorce, quince, 11 through 15. The other numbers in the whole language are so easy, okay? It's a basic math problem, okay? So I want you to look here at all the rest of these as we go through 16 through 19. These are easy because, um, and I'm gonna pull up another screen where I can write here for you. The number 16 in Spanish, or in English, you can arrive at um, by doing some basic math. So 16 is given to you by 10 plus six, right? So 10 in Spanish, we said was diez, and in Spanish is e, and seis is six. So diez y seis is 16. You will notice that uh, it is correct to also write it with an i. So diez y seis. In this case, the z in diez is changed to a c, the y becomes an i, and you up with diez y seis. How do you think we would do 17? In this case, 17 is 10 plus 7, so we would get diez y siete. 18 would be 
pies y ocho. Ten and eight. And nineteen, everybody, would be? Very good. Hopefully you're saying diez y nueve. Okay? So you can do a little bit of basic math. All of your other numbers work the same way. So what I recommend, memorize one through fifteen. Okay? And then just learn your tens. So once you know one through fifteen, you need to know twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, so on and so forth to a hundred. Um, for example, 20 in Spanish is 20. 20. So if you know that 20 is 20, you can easily arrive at 20 y uno, 21. 20 y dos, 22. 20 y tres, 23. So on and so forth. If you know that 30 is 30, you can easily arrive at 30 y uno, 31. 30 y dos, 32. So on and so forth. Now, Typically, your numbers from 16 through 29 are going to be written with an I instead of a Y for and. So again, going back to the diez y seis, a diez y siete, instead of seeing diez y siete, you see it with the C and the I, diez y siete. Um, some textbooks that I've used in the past also use the Z, so it really is personal preference here. For my Spanish lab and those kind of things, you're going to want to learn it with the C. So make sure you use it here as you see in the picture. Okay, so diez y siete with the I. So one more time, 16 through 29, you're most often going to see with the I instead of the Y. Okay? Um, all the others, you just need to memorize the tens. So 20, 20, 30, 30. 30, 40, 40, 50, 50, 60, 60, 70, 70, 80, 80, 90, 90, and 100. Okay, so um, if you wanted to say, for example, um, we'll do 66. 66 is easily um, added by 60 and 6, which in Spanish is exactly what you're saying. So 60, you may recall from a second ago, was 60 and 6, and in Spanish is E, written as a Y. So 60 y 6, 6. What would 68 be? 60 y 8, right? So you have to do a little math here. Who knew you were going to have math in Spanish class, right? But hopefully not too terribly bad for you there. Okay, close out of this here. All right, so in your practice questions this week, I want you to look here. Um, I'm going to give you something in Spanish, and you have to go backwards the other way. So we see ciento ocho estudiantes. Well, you know that cien is 100. Anything past 100, we add the T-O. So cien, 100, ciento uno. 101, 102, 102. In this case, we have 108, which gives you 108. What about these two? I want you to try 39 profesores and 99 clases. So go ahead and pause your audio. Give these other two a try. All right, now that you've had a second to try these, uh, as we look here at our second one, you see 39 profesores, which should give you 39. 30, 30, y nueve, and 9. So 30 and 9, 39. 99 clases, 90, 90, nueve, 9. So you should get 99 classes. Okay. You may also see something on My Spanish Live, or maybe on a test, hint, hint, kind of like this, where I give you... Um, some um, some analogies here, um, some, some situations where you have some blanks and you have to go through and fill in what's missing. So you see uno, one, a blank, and cinco, another blank, and nueve. So if you look at these, you have one, five, and nine. What kind of numbers are these? You kind of have to figure out the sequence. One, five, and nine are all odd numbers, so we're missing three, tres, and siete, seven. So uno, tres, cinco, siete, nueve, uh, odd numbers, okay? Here are a couple for you to try. Like I said, you kind of have to figure out the, the numbering sequence. So I want you to pause your audio, 
um, and just give a few of these a try. Just do numbers one and two for me. Okay, hopefully you've had a second to go through and try these. All right, so on number one, we see dos, two, a blank, seis, six, ocho, eight, a blank, doce, 12, and another blank. So you can see obviously we're skipping by twos here. Uh, these are also what we call even numbers. So you have dos, cuatro, so two, four, six, eight, dos, cuatro, seis, ocho. We're missing 10, diez, we have doce, 12, and then we're missing 14, catorce. Okay, so we're skipping by twos each time. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, so on and so forth, your even numbers. On number two, you have a different pattern. You have uno, one, cinco, five, nueve, nine, a blank, diecisiete, 17, and then veinte y uno, 21. What's my pattern here? I went from one to five, so I increased by four. I went from five to nine, increased by four. Hmm. Diecisiete, increased by four, I went to 21, so I'm increasing by four each time. Nine plus four is 13, so I should end up with 13 here, trece, uh, and then plus four is diecisiete, 17, plus four, 21, veinte y ocho, veinte y uno, and then plus four more, 25, it should be veinte y cinco, veinte y cinco, okay? Um, also, sometimes you'll see this written as veinte y cinco, but your text in my Spanish lab prefer, shoot, cinco, prefer the, uh, with the I there, so veinte y cinco, okay? All right, um, so hopefully you're feeling okay about your numbers. You may also be asked to do something like this on My Spanish Lab where it gives you a picture and it gives you puntos de interés, points of interest, and you want to figure out how many points of interest there are in Madrid. Um, okay, so as you are looking here, you can see there are 83 points of interest. So for 83, we're going to just say 80, 80, and... E and then three, tres, ochenta y tres. Okay, for niños, children, you can see there's 61, so we're gonna need to say what? Very good, 60 was sesenta, and one, e uno. Try the last one, concerts. If you look over there, conciertos, you can see there are 25. So 20, you're gonna say, veinte, and five, e cinco. All right, hopefully you're feeling pretty good about those. Now, if we were in class, I would do something really fun, uh, seated in the rows, I would make you uh, start out, I would give you a telephone number in each row and ask you to go down the row and share your phone number, but that's kind of hard to do in an in-person class, but um, you're welcome to, to practice reading phone numbers, practice reading numbers aloud, whatever it is that helps you to learn these, okay? Um, Speaking of phone numbers, on your exam, uh, I may ask you to do something like this, where I give you numbers in Spanish and you have to write them out. So you see cinco and you're going to write five. You see cuarenta y cinco, you know that cuarenta is 40 and cinco is five. We're going to write 45. Veinte, which was 20. And diez y ocho, 18, 10 and 8. Diez y ocho, okay? So go through and write those out. I want you to try number two here. Okay, now that you've got a second to try, you see siete, seven, setenta y cuatro, setenta is seventy, cuatro is four, sesenta y tres, sesenta is sixty, and tres, sixty-three, and then cuarenta, forty. Okay, so hopefully you're seeing how these work with various phone numbers. Um, I may also give you a section like this where you're given uh, some type of item and you have to tell how many of them there are. So here it gives you mapas, maps, it gives you the number six. So you need to write six in Spanish, seis. You might also see another item like cuadernos. It's going to give you the number. There are 12 of them and you need to say there are 12 notebooks, doce cuadernos. Okay, so that covers our review of greetings and introductions, the alphabet and numbers from zero through 100. Next, we're going to begin by looking at what are called your subject pronouns. Now, I always like to start by telling students what subject pronouns are in English, okay? So a subject pronoun is how we identify ourselves. It's the subject of a sentence. So you might say, um, I 
you, he, she, we, they, or you all. And I'm putting them in this box because this box is going to be important for you later. I call this the magical box of Spanish, and you'll understand why. So uh, here in our first person, you see I, you, second person, and he or she, third person. So you can kind of look at these as one, two, and three. I, you, he or she, we have we, and then they are you all. Okay, so let's put these in Spanish. Yo is I in Spanish, yo. Tu is you, informal. Learned that earlier. You have both el and ella that mean he or she. So el is he, ella, she. And usted is you, formal. We also use this bottom left box for things that are considered to be it, something singular like the class, it, or um, things of that nature that are just one in nature. Okay, so yo, I, tu, you, informal, el, he, ella, she, and usted, you formal. Here in the top right, we have the plural form still in the first person. So nosotros and nosotras both mean we. Nosotros with an OS is we masculine, so referring to a group of guys. And nosotras, we feminine, so referring to a group of girls, okay? So um, be very careful. You may recall back earlier to encantado and encantada. Pleased or delighted to meet you. If you were a guy, you said encantado. If you were a girl, you said encantada, so depending on what it ends in there. Um, you have vosotros and vosotras, you all, only used in Spain. So um, your professor in Spain might come in and say, como estáis? How are you all? Como estáis vosotros? Referring to a group of um, multiple mixed people, men and women, vosotros. Um, and vosotras, referring only to two women. So... Uh, your professor may walk in and see um, you, who you assuming you're feminine, and also seeing your female roommate, and they might she might say, "Como estáis vosotras?" How are you all doing? Referring to two women. So these are sort of tricky. If you if it ends in os, it can refer to only men, or a mixed group of men and women. If it ends in as, it refers only to two women. Okay, so careful there. So nosotros and nosotras both mean we. Vosotros and vosotras both mean you all in Spain. Ellos and ellas both mean they. Same thing. Ellos with an OS, they, all masculine, all guys. Ellas, they, all, all ladies. Or ellos can also be a mixed group of men and women. Okay, and then you have ustedes, you all. One more little note about these. Sometimes you see these abbreviated. Usted, abbreviated as UD period. And ustedes, UDS period. Okay, so we're going to practice with these going to the opposite language. So let's look at these. Number one tells you Juan y yo. You learned earlier that the Y in Spanish means and. So Juan y yo is just Juan and I. Juan and I would be which one of these? I, you, he, she, we, they, or you all. Juan and I in English would become we. Now, there's, you know, there's two ways to say we in Spanish, so nosotros or nosotras. How do we know which one to use? Well, there's at least one guy present in this situation, so we are going to use nosotros. Now, if this same sentence had said um, Beatriz y yo, Beatrice and I, in this case, uh, depending on if you are a male or a female, you may say nosotros or nosotras. If I personally were saying Beatriz y yo, I would say nosotros because I am a man, right? But if you are a female and you were saying Beatriz y yo, then you would say nosotras because you are both female. Okay, so tricky there. Um, look at another one. Number two says Doctora Macion. Okay, so Dr. Macion. Dr. Macion would be I, you, he, she, we, they, or you all. Doctora Macion would be she. So in this case, Doctora Macion, she. She in Spanish, you may recall, is ella. 
Okay, so we should say Ega. All right, I'd like for you to try numbers three, four, and five. All right, so now that you've unpaused your audio, hopefully you've given those a try. Matthew and Sherry would be I, you, he, she, we, or they. Matthew and Sherry would be they. So we're going to put they. There is one man and one woman here. So in this case, Matthew and Sherry, they, is going to take the masculine form. There's at least one man. So it's going to be ellos. Okay. What about number four? It just says you. Well, is it you formal or you informal? We don't know. If it's you informal, it would be tu. If it's you informal, it would be usted. All right, and then last one, number five says you all. Well, this is tricky. You all, if you're in the country of Spain and only in Spain, you could use vosotros or vosotras, depending on if you're talking to men or women. If you're in any country other than Spain to say you all, you're going to use ustedes. Okay, so kind of kind of tricky there. All right, so you've gotten to see those subject pronouns. Now, if you're wondering, well, why does this crazy guy call this the magical box of Spanish? This is why, as you start conjugating verbs and learning um, how this process works in Spanish, we take the subject pronouns and add a verb to them. So instead of just saying I, you, he, she, we, or they, we start forming complete thoughts, right? So we're going to start talking about the verb ser. Ser means to be. It's one of the two verbs in Spanish that means to be. So to say I am, we can't just say yo ser, because we said yo means I, and ser was to be. So if you just said yo ser, that would mean that I to be. And you would look at me really strange if I went up to you and said, I to be teacher, you to be student, right? Look at me really weird. So we have to conjugate this verb ser, and that just means we're going to change it around a little bit. So as we conjugate ser, uh, you see the forms here in red. We end up with yo soy. Tú eres, él, ella, usted, es, nosotros, somos, vosotros, sois, and ellos, ellas, ustedes, son. So say these with me. Soy, eres, es, somos, sois, son. Okay? So these are your conjugations of ser. So I am, yo soy, tú eres, you are. El, ella, usted, es, he, she, or you formal, is or are. Nosotros somos, we are. Vosotros sois, you all in Spain are. And ellos, ellas, ustedes, they or you all are. Okay, so let's look at some questions in a, the form of a paragraph where you have to choose between them. So this little paragraph starts out telling you that hoy, today, Hay un examen en la clase de Señor Harrison. So today, there's an exam in Mr. Harrison's class. And los estudiantes blank inteligentes. We're saying that the students blank intelligent. Uh, so you need to decide the students would be I, you, he, she, we, or they. Hopefully you're saying the students would be they. We know that they goes with my bottom right box. So we look at, and I'm going to go ahead and just copy this down here. If we look at this, the bottom right box for they, and we find our appropriate ser word in that box, it becomes son. So I call this the magical box because you can use it to kind of help you figure out the correct answer at any given time in Spanish. And this will serve you all throughout the rest of your Spanish classes as well. So um, they and son. So they are. So we're going to say los estudiantes son inteligentes. They are intelligent. Pero el profesor but the professor, blank, muy exigente. The professor is very demanding. So the professor, in this case, would be I, you, he, she, we, they, or you all. Good. The professor would be he. So I'm using my bottom left box. I'm going to say el profesor, he, es. He is. El profesor es muy exigente. Okay, we'll do one more, and then I'm going to turn you loose. Um, it says that la clase, blank, muy difícil. We're saying that the class blank, very difficult. So the class, would the class be I, you, he, she, we, they, or you all? None of the above. The class, in this case, would be considered it. 
you may remember from earlier, I also put it in this box here, the bottom left. So in this case, we're going to say the class is very difficult. La clase es muy difícil. I want you to pause your audio and give the rest of these a try. Okay, now that you've had a second to try these, let's look together. It says that Blaine dice, Blaine says, Profesor, nosotros blank buenos estudiantes, no? So Blaine says, Professor, Professor, we're good students, right? Uh, so we're good students. Nosotros obviously means we. You know that the, the said word to go with nosotros should be somos. So nosotros somos buenos estudiantes. Y el examen blank mañana. So professor, we're good students in the exam blank tomorrow, right? We're saying the exam it is tomorrow. We know that it is my bottom left box. Ace is the correct word. So I should say here that el examen es mañana. Um, and el profesor responde. The professor responds, I blame, blame, blame. Yo blank el profesor. El examen blank hoy. Y ya blank tarde. So, oh my gosh, blame. I blank the professor. We know that yo means I. My top left box, we're going to say that yo soy el profesor. I'm the professor. El examen blank hoy. The exam, it again. Bottom left box, so el examen, el examen es hoy, the exam is today, y ya blank Saturday, and it's already late. Um, so ya es Saturday because my subject here is still referring back to the exam. So the exam is today, and already, um, it's already, already late. We already need to get started on that. So ya es Saturday, okay? So just some examples for you there. Um, you might see something on my Spanish lab, kind of like this, that you have to do, where it gives you a sentence. La clase de francés blank muy interesante. Okay, so remember, you're using all of these lovely said words here with these, and let's see if it'll, oops, let's see if it'll let me just put these in here for you. Okay, I'm gonna move this over here, out of the way if I can. Okay, hopefully you can still see those. So there's your magical box of Spanish. So as we're looking at these, la clase de francés blank muy interesante. The class of French, or we would say French class, is very interesting. Well, would French class be I, you, he, she, it, we, or they? Very good. French class would be it. We said that it was my bottom left box. So we're going to say that la clase de francés es... Muy interesante. Number two, ask you, de donde blank tu? So, de donde, from where, blank you. The trick with these, even if you can't understand the sentence just yet at this point in your Spanish career, you can probably find the subject of your sentence, figure out which box it matches up with, and fill in the correct word. So, de donde blank tu? With tu, we have the word eres here. So, de donde eres tu is asking you where are you from, um, but if, even if you didn't know that yet, you do know that tu and eres go together. Okay, we're not going to do all of these, but I'd like for you to take a moment and just do the odds, three, five, seven, and nine. Take a moment, pause your audio, and give this a try. Okay, now that you've had a second to try these, it tells you that Aldo y Ricardo, so Aldo and Ricardo, are extrovertidos, they're extroverted. So you have to ask yourself, well, would Ricardo and Aldo be I, you, he, she, it, we, they, or you all? Well, Aldo and Ricardo would be they. So in this case, you're using your bottom right box. And we're going to say that Aldo and Ricardo son extrovertidos. Okay. Number five, ustedes blank de México. You all are from Mexico. Ustedes, you know, is here, UDS period. So we're going to say ustedes son de México. Nosotros blank realistas. We are realist. We're realistic. Um, you can see up here nosotros. The correct said word should be somos. Okay. And then tu blank mexicano. You are Mexican. Your origin is from Mexico. So tu blank mexicano. 
our correct ser word to go with tu is eres, we should say tu eres mexicano. Okay, so hopefully feeling good about that so far. On your exam, maybe I might ask you to do something like this where you see a picture and you have to go through and describe the picture telling whether these things are true or false. So for example, um, number one tells you in la clase de español hay cinco mochilas. In the class of Spanish, there are five mochilas. Well, you, you have to know what mochilas are. Hopefully, if you've been studying your vocab, you know that mochilas are backpacks. So we have to figure out if that's true or false. Well, let's count. One, two, three, four, and five. If I counted correctly, I would say that that is cierto. That's true. Number two, hay 19 estudiantes en la clase. There are 10 y 9. What is that again? 10 was 10. Mm -hmm. And 9, 9. So there are 10 and 9, or 19 students in the class. Let's count and see if that's correct. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Ooh, solo hay 12 estudiantes en la clase. There are only 12, 12 estudiantes en la clase. So, no hay 19. This should be falso. Falso. Okay? Y número 3. Hay un mapa en la clase. There's a map in the class. Is that true? Oh, looky there. Una, un mapa. Así que eso es cierto. Cierto. True. Okay? So, we've talked about a lot so far. Feel free at any point to pause and take a break. Okay? Um... Now, I'm going to lump these next three things all together. We're going to talk about your days of the week, months of the year, and seasons, all in Spanish, okay? So, uh, as we look at these, your days of the week, months of the year, and your seasons, we're going to start with your days of the week. Um, these are sort of vocabulary related, but I'm going to use them in a second for something you're going to be doing with grammar, and that's writing the date. So, let's just make sure you know these. Now, a couple weird things about Spanish. If you look at a calendar in English, the week usually starts on Sunday, okay, and it ends on Saturday. So as you look at the calendar in English, um, you would see Sunday as the first day and Saturday as the last day. However, in Spanish, it's the opposite. Your week begins on Monday and ends on Sunday. So uh, you can see these days of the week here. Lunes is Monday. Martes, Tuesday, Miércoles, Wednesday, Jueves, Thursday, Viernes, Friday, Sábado, Saturday, and Domingo, Sunday. Okay, so let's say these together. Lunes, Martes, Miércoles, Jueves, Viernes, Sábado, and Domingo. All right, so hopefully you um, have been able to pronounce those. Okay, so lunes, Monday, martes, Tuesday, so on and so forth. Make sure you know these. These are the days of your week. Also, you see this beautiful beach here. Wouldn't you like to be there right now? Playa Giron in Cuba um, as your, your picture for the calendar. It tells you that we are in the, the year of 2018, 2018, and it tells you we're in the month of Junio. What month do you think Junio might be? Ah, very good. Junio is June. June, Junio. Okay. Uh, so a couple of grammatical notes from your text that are important to know here. Um, you might need to ask someone, ¿Qué día es hoy? So, ¿Qué día? What day? Es is hoy. Today. ¿Qué día es hoy? What day is today? ¿Qué día es hoy? You also might need to ask, ¿Qué día? What day? Es mañana. So remember back to before, you, you learned hasta mañana. See you tomorrow. Um, so, ¿qué día es mañana? What day is tomorrow? And ¿qué día es hoy? What day is today? Um, you may answer these questions and say, today is whatever day. So it just so happens today is Thursday. I would say, hoy es, today is jueves. Today is Thursday. Hoy es jueves. Um, if you want to say that something is going to happen on a certain day, like, hey, the exam is on Monday, the oral interview is on Wednesday or whatever, you need to use the article el, E-L, el, in front of whatever day. So el examen es el lunes. The exam is on Monday. 
la entrevista oral es el viernes. The, the oral interview is on Friday, okay? So to communicate that on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday thing that we do in English, you just put el in front of your day of the week, okay? And finally, if this is a recurring action, something that happens a lot, instead of saying on Monday or on Tuesday, if you want to say on Mondays, on Tuesdays, on Saturdays, uh, instead of using el as your article, you're going to use los. Okay, so instead of el lunes, um, if the exams are on Mondays, instead of saying el examen es el lunes, we're going to say that los exámenes, the exams, son, are los lunes. They are on Mondays instead of the Monday. Or, um, this is not true, it should be true, but voy al gimnasio los sábados. I go to the gym los sábados on Saturdays. I should go to the gym on Saturday, but I don't. Voy al gimnasio los sábados on Saturdays. Okay, so... Um, if I was talking about this particular coming Saturday, on Saturday, I would say el sábado. But if it's a recurring action, something I do every single Saturday, I'm going to make it plural and say los sábados. Okay? So, you have those. Um, you may see something like this on a test where I give you a calendar, and you have to go through and decide que día es, what day is it? So, and it gives you uh, September the 7th. So, you have to find el 7 de septiembre. So, find the 7. We're in the month of septiembre. I'm sure you can guess that's September. Uh, go down and find, find the 7. What day is this? Well, lunes, martes, miércoles. Uh, this has to be Wednesday because it's the third day. I told you our calendars always start on Monday. So, lunes, martes, miércoles is a Wednesday. So, you're just going to write here, miércoles. Put the accent there on the e. miércoles. Okay. And then uh, el 30 de septiembre, the 30th of September. Go ahead and find your 30. This is uh, up here. So count again. Lunes, martes, miércoles, jueves, viernes. Oh, viernes. Everyone's favorite day of the week, Friday. Viernes. Okay. All right. So hopefully you see this. So we've talked about your days of the week. One more time. Say these with me. Lunes, martes, Miércoles, jueves, viernes, sábado, domingo. Those are your days of the week from Monday through Sunday. Now, we're going to add the months in here um, along with your season. So, uh, you see a snowman here. You see snow everywhere. What season do you think invierno is going to fall under? Yeah, hopefully you're saying winter there, invierno. Uh, you see these months as a part of invierno. We see diciembre. Repeat that. Repeat with me. Diciembre, enero, febrero. Well, you can probably guess that diciembre is December, enero, January, and febrero, February. Those are the months of winter. Diciembre, enero, febrero. December, January, and February. Over here, we see some tulips blooming, some red birds, the sun's coming out. I hmm, wonder what season that is. Ah, la primavera. La primavera. Spring. La primavera. Okay, in spring, we have the months of marzo. Careful there. The Z in Spanish makes an S sound, generally speaking. So you end up with marzo. Uh, now, occasionally, um, those um, who are from Spain, those people of Spanish origin, sometimes tend to um, make the Z have a TH sound. So sometimes you hear marzo. Marzo. Um, but generally speaking, the Z makes an S sound, so marzo in other countries. Um, abril is the month of April, abril, and then May. Now, this is a really big pet peeve of mine, okay? Um, this word is pronounced as mayo. Repitan, mayo, okay? This is not mayo, like what you put on your hamburger. Uh, I hear a lot of times people uh, going through and they pronounce this word as Mayo. Okay, this is not mayo. This is mayo. Mayo. Okay, so diciembre, enero, febrero, marzo, abril, mayo. Okay, uh, you also have some other months and other seasons here. We have el verano. This dude is standing here with a fan and 
the sun's blowing, he's sweating, this has to be summertime, el verano, okay, and you see some different months, we already talked about junio, June, julio, July, and agosto, August, agosto, okay, and finally you see some acorns falling and some leaves, oh, we're getting to my favorite season here, el otoño, fall, Let's go get a pumpkin spice latte. Uh, okay, and you see septiembre, September, octubre, October, noviembre, November. So these are all of your um, months of the year, going from December all the way through back to November. So uh, let's say these together one more time. And we'll start with January. Enero, febrero, marzo, abril, mayo, Junio, Julio, Agosto, Septiembre, Octubre, Noviembre. Now, you may be noticing that none of these start with capital letters, nor do these days of the weeks. Uh, that's not just because I'm being lazy. That is because um, in Spanish, your days of the week and months of the year are not capitalized. Okay? They are always, always, always lowercase. So this is a very common error in Spanish that I see people want to capitalize those. It should be lowercase. Okay, so I'm going to give you some practice questions here. It tells you that in Chicago, marzo, abril y mayo son meses de la blank. So in Chicago, March, April, and May. Marzo, abril y mayo. So meses de la blank. So in Chicago, March, April, and May are months of what? Well, if you look back, March, April, and May are months of springtime. So we should use the word for spring here or la primavera. Okay, uh, let's do another example. You see el día de San Valentín. I haven't told you what that is, but you might be able to, to guess. El día is a day, and the day of San Valentín... Yeah, the day of St. Valentine, or we would say Valentine's Day, is el 14 de, the 14th of, and you have to go through and provide a month here. So Valentine's Day is the 14th of February. If we look back, February is febrero. Uh, notice it should not be capitalized at all. Uh, I'm typing in all caps, so mine is, but otherwise that would not be capitalized. Okay, I want you to try numbers 3, 4, and 5 for me. Go ahead and pause your audio, give these a try. Okay, as you look at these, number three says, El día de la independencia de los Estados Unidos es el cuatro de... So, the day of independence, or Independence Day in the U.S., and that's how we abbreviate USA in Spanish, by the way. It's e e u u You sound like a monkey when you say it. e e u u The Estados... e e Estados, and then Unidos, for United. Estados Unidos, the states united. You cannot say in Spanish you were from America, right? That doesn't work. We say we're from Estados Unidos, the United States, because America is a much larger continent. Um, so, uh, number three, the Independence Day is the 4th of what? Well, you know Independence Day is the 4th of July, and July in Spanish is Julio. Okay. Los días del fin de semana, the days of the end of the week, are blank and blank. Well, um, the end of the week, in my book, the weekend, is Saturday and Sunday. So we have sábado, Saturday, and domingo, Sunday. All right. Um, and then finally, your last one, el día de acción de gracias es en el mes de blank. So the day of the action of thanks, or um, the day of giving thanks, the day of thanksgiving, we would say, is in the month of blank. Well, thanksgiving falls in the month of noviembre. November. Noviembre. Okay. So we've kind of come full circle here uh, in talking about days of the week, months of the year, seasons. I want to teach you how to write the date in Spanish while we're here. And um, just a really quick lesson. It asks you, ¿Cuál es la fecha de hoy? What is the date of today? Or, ¿Cuál es la fecha? And um, you're going to write this in Spanish a little backwards. So um, I want you to look down here at my abbreviations. In English, we oftentimes see 
our dates written like this month month day day year 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 okay so um, if today were April 1st we would say 4 1 2020 or whatever year right in Spanish they do it differently they do not put the month first they put the day first so April the first would be the first of April 0104 so they write it more in this format where the day comes before the month day day month month year 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 okay uh, again as I said everything is lowercase and um, for the first this is the only really weird one we don't say el uno day the first of we say el primero day primero means first so the first of April would be el primero day what was April again el primero de abril hopefully you're saying abril okay let's try a different day here uh, what if I were to give you I'm gonna give you my birthday uh, my birthday is June 22nd okay so the 22nd 20 in Spanish you may remember is 20 and two 22 or you see it written in your book 22 um, so it's the 22nd of June el 22 de of and then June junio so the 22nd of June we would write this out like this if you were writing it out uh, in numbers. Okay, so el 22 de junio. Let's give you a few of these to try. Number one tells you that today is Thursday, January 17th. So if I want to say today is, you may recall from earlier, hoy es, today is Thursday, jueves, and then the 17th of January. I need to go through and write this out uh, date wise. It would be el. Diez y siete, or in your book, diez y siete, de, and January was enero. So literally the 17th of January. So in these situations, el means the, and de means of. Let's do one more. Number two, tomorrow is, so you may recall hoy was today, tomorrow is mañana. So mañana es, tomorrow is Friday, viernes, the 18th of January. So V again, el 18th, diez y ocho of January, de enero. Okay, and be very careful here. It shows you 312. Is this March the 12th? No, it's not. This is the 3rd of December. Be careful. Remember, the day comes before the month. So the 3rd would be el tres, the third, of de, in December, diciembre. I want you to take a moment and try numbers four and five really fast on your own. Okay, now that you've had a second to pause your audio and give these a try, let's take a look here. Number four gives you the first of August, remember they're backwards, day first, so the first is not el uno day, it is el primero de, the first of, and then the eighth month of the year is August, el primero de agosto. All right, and our last one, the 27th of the fourth month, so that would be the 27th of April, we're going to say el 20, 20 y 7, or written in your book, el 20 y 7 of April de abril. Okay. Uh, you may be asked to do some activities with these this week where I go through and I show you like a holiday, El Dia de San Patricio, St. Patrick's Day. You have to know that that is March the 17th, El Diez y Siete de Marzo, the 17th of March. Here's some other exciting ones for you. La Noche de Brujas, uh, the Night of Witches, or we would say Halloween. Uh, La Noche de Brujas, actually, in... Um, English becomes the 31st of October, so I'm going to say the 31st and 30 y uno, the 31st of October, de octubre. Okay, I want you to try number two for me. We've done the others. Number two gives you La Noche Vieja, New Year's, okay? So uh, let's assume this is New Year's Eve, actually, instead of New Year's Day. Let's do New Year's Eve, the 31st of December. You would say, El 30 y uno de diciembre, and sorry, spelling it. 
El 31 de diciembre. Or if this were January 1st, you would not say el 1 de enero. You would say el primero, the first de enero. All right. So we've talked about writing those dates. We've talked about several things. I want to move into just a few little thoughts as we wrap up. Um, in Spanish, we have four ways to say the or the, depending on where you're from. So the party, the drink, the pizza, the banana, whatever it might be, okay? Um, there are four ways to say the in Spanish. Um, typically, if your noun ends in an O, it is masculine, and if your noun ends in an A, it is feminine. Okay, that's generally how you know which one of these to use is by looking at the ending of the word that follows. Your four ways to say the are el, la, los, and las. El and la are both singular. Notice they don't have an S on the end, so they're, they're singular, they're not plural. El and la. El, in this case, is masculine and singular. And la is feminine and singular. You also have los and las, which are both plural. Los has an O in there. Remember what we talked about earlier, things that ended in O are masculine. So los is both masculine and plural, and las is both feminine and plural. Okay, so um, let's look at an example. Let's say I have something super easy like pizza. Well, how many pizzas are there? There's only one pizza, um, so it's, whenever we're getting, it's going to be singular, we can narrow this down to the top part of our box here, our first line. Um, is pizza masculine or feminine? Well, it ends in an A, so you know that it's feminine. We should say la pizza. What if I wanted to make it plural? Well, pizza ends in an A, so to make it plural, let's add an S. We get pizzas, and um, how many pizzas are here? More than one, so now instead of being singular, it's plural. It ends in AS, so it is feminine and plural. We should have las pizzas. Okay, a trick with these in general, this doesn't always work, but you can make sure they agree. Pizza ends in an A, so it has to be la. Pizzas ends in AS, so it has to be las. You can kind of go through and cheat just a little bit by comparing your endings, okay? Let's look at a few examples. There are some of these also that refer to people. So for example, el hombre is a man, el hombre. Um, el chico is a boy. El muchacho is a guy, we might say, or a boy. In all of those situations, we used el because we were talking about one male, okay? If we had multiple men, instead of el muchacho, we would now use the plural form. We would say los, and then instead of muchacho, muchachos, we would just add an S. Instead of el chico, we would have los chicos. Okay, we just make it plural. Um, sometimes only the article is used to indicate gender as well. So, for example, el profesor is a male professor, whereas la profesora is a female professor. So you can see just the slight difference. El profesor, la profesora. This ends in an A, so it has to be feminine. El señor, Mr. La señora, Mrs. Okay, so look at the example down here. Uh, soy la profesora Gomez. I am Mrs. Gomez. Um, in this case, um, when I was talking to someone directly, let's say that I was introducing myself. I was saying, hi, I'm Professor Harrison. Instead of saying, soy la profesora Gomez, I would say, soy El Profesor Harrison, okay? Uh, you only use the article there when you're addressing someone in that case. You don't have to use it when you're talking to someone directly. Um, okay, so I know this is a lot of information. Let's try these definite articles. You may remember again your options are el, la, los, or las. Let's try these one more time as we fill in these words. So you have a cuaderno, a notebook, which ends in an O. So ask yourself, is this masculine or is it feminine? Well, it ends in an O, uh, so it's, in this case, it's going to be masculine. It's not plural, because it doesn't have an S. So masculine plural, I'm, or sorry, masculine singular, I'm going to use A for cuaderno. If this had been plural, uh, if I had had cuadernos with an OS, um, 
I would use los because it would be both masculine and plural at that point. So I would need to say los cuadernos. Look at another example. You see the word pluma here, which is a pen. So pluma ends in an A. Is pluma masculine or feminine? Well, it ends in an A, so therefore it is feminine. How many pens are there? One or more than one. There's only one pen, there's no S. So in this case, it is feminine, ends in an A, and it's singular, so I should use la. So I'm going to say in this one, la pluma. Okay. Uh, let's say I had multiple pens. Let's say that I had plumas. In this case, the pens would become las plumas. Okay, las plumas. I want you to try numbers three, four, and five. Okay, so I gave you a word you don't know here. You probably don't know what an oso is yet, and that's okay. But I bet you can figure out how to get the right answer. So an oso is actually a bear in Spanish. Oso ends in an O. So is it masculine or feminine? It is masculine. How many bears are there? One or more than one? Only one. So it's got to be el oso. Okay, boligrafos ends in OS. There are multiple pens here. It is masculine because it ends in OS, so masculine in plural, I'm going to use los, los bodígrafos. And finally, our last one, calculadoras. There are multiple calculators here. Uh, this ends in AS, so it is feminine. It ends in AS, and it's plural, so I should use las calculadoras. Okay. Um, there are some irregulars with these, and the best thing to do is just memorize the grammar rules. Okay. So. Occasionally, you may encounter a word that um, does not match up with the correct ending. So usually, things that end in an O are masculine. Things that end in an A are feminine. Uh, you do have some words that don't follow that rule. The best thing to do is just memorize these. Um, el dia, for example, is a day. Well, day ends in an A. Dia ends in an A. So you would think it would be la dia, but it's not. It's el dia. Same thing with mapa. Mapa ends in an A, so you would think that, oh gosh, well, it, it ends in an A, it's going to be feminine. Well, it's not. It's el mapa. There are just some irregulars that just don't follow the rules that you just have to memorize. Something else for you to know is that nouns that end in ad, like universidad, or ion, like nación, these are feminine. So you end up with la universidad and la nación. Um, Generally, nouns that end in ma or pa, like we saw up here, mapa, are feminine as well. Um, but in this case, um, that, sh that should say that they are masculine, not feminine. That's a typo on my part, sorry. So ma, pa, ta words typically follow, um, in this case, to become masculine. So instead of la problema, you get el problema. Instead of la mapa, you get el mapa. And the nouns that ended in E can go either way. They can be masculine or feminine, like la clase, for example. I want you to try a few of these that are sort of inconspicuous. You can't tell based on just the ending. Okay, so take a moment, pause your audio, give these a try. All right, so as you're filling these out, you have to kind of think about what these things are. Number one gives you señor. You learned earlier that señor means mister, so a mister or a sir. So there's only one person here. It is masculine and it is singular. So I should use el to describe because it is masculine and singular. El señor. Okay, here we have a profesora. That's pretty easy. It ends in an A. There's only one of them. So it's feminine and it's singular. It's going to be la, la profesora. Okay. Next, we have la verdad, which is the truth. We said earlier in our grammar rule that most nouns that end in ad, like universidad, are going to be feminine. So verdad, in fact, is feminine. You have la verdad. And then problema, it's one of my words that ends in ma, pa, or ta, which always tends to be masculine. So you end up with el problema, the problem. Okay, so very, very careful with those. Um, I also want to talk to you about how to go through and make these nouns plural. So this is actually kind of easy. If your noun, the word you're talking about, if it ends in a vowel, if it ends in a vowel, A-E-I-O-U, 
then you are going to add an S to make it plural. We did this earlier a little bit. So for example, cuaderno ends in a vowel, it ends in an O, so it became cuadernos, just by adding an S. Okay, so if it ends in a vowel to make the noun plural, you just add an S. If it ends in a consonant though, you're gonna add ES. We have a very similar grammar rule in English. So for example, la universidad ends in a D. A D is not a vowel, it's not an A, I, or U. So to make it plural, we can't just add S. We can't just say universidades, that doesn't work. You have to add an ES, it becomes universidades. Okay? Um, something else for you to know, if your noun ends in a Z, to make it plural, you're going to remove the Z and replace it with an C and then add ES. So for example, a lapis is a pencil. Um, to have multiple pencils, you don't get lapises, you get lapises. Lapises, it's just a phonetic change in the, the pronunciation. Your Z changes to a C, so you get lapises. Okay, and then the very last thing, um, and this is not critical, just a little tidbit here, but nación, uh, a nation, um, anything that ends in on, an accent, o, and an n, to make it plural, you're going to add es because it ends in a consonant, the n, right? But you just remove the accent, so naciones. One less thing that you have to worry about there, okay? So the big takeaway here, don't, don't get too stressed in the details, okay? If your noun ends in a vowel, a, e, i, or u, to make it plural, just add an s. If it ends in a consonant, anything other than a, e, i, or u, you need to add an es. So for example, you have el papel. The paper, to get multiple papers, um, papel ends in an L, so instead of adding just an S, we're going to add ES. Since there are multiple papers, it's going to be los papeles. What about number two, la tarea? Well, uh, tarea, in this case, ends in a vowel, so to make it plural, we're going to add an S. Same thing with la, add an S. Las tareas, multiple homework. And then this should say, sorry, typo, el estudiante, the student, to have multiple students, estudiante ends in an E, multiple students, we're going to add an S because it ends in a vowel, estudiantes. We can't say el estudiantes, though, because there's multiple students here, likely a mixed group of men and women, so I'm going to default to the masculine, as we talked about earlier, so you end up with los estudiantes, okay? Hopefully you're feeling okay on those. Um, something else you might see kind of related to this on your exam this week kind of looks like this. So um, I said your exam this week, but um, your, your chapter one exam, not necessarily this week, uh, but fill in each blank here using the correct article, either el, la, los, or las. And don't forget, make sure you should be paying attention in both gender and number. So it gives you that blank profesor de español es muy inteligente. So the Spanish professor is very intelligent. Well, it doesn't say profesora, so we know this is a male professor. There's only one of them. So in this case, I should be using el. El profesor, singular. Let's look at another one. Blank pizarra es grande y verde. So the chalkboard is big and green. So uh, there's only one chalkboard here. It ends in an A, does not have an S on it. Um, it is feminine, because it ends in an A. So for feminine singular, the chalkboard, we're gonna say la pizarra, okay? I'd like for you to pause your audio and give numbers three, four, and five a try for me. Okay, number three says that blank Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I go to the class of biology. So I'm saying that on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I go to the class of biology. So you may recall from earlier, to say on these days, you're going to use the plural form of your article. Uh, days of the week are always masculine, so instead of el, I'm going to use los. Los lunes, miércoles, y viernes. Voy a la clase de biología. Uh, number four, todos blank días, necesito mi diccionario. So all the days, I need my dictionary every day. Um, day, you may recall, was masculine. It was el día, even though it ended in an A. So here I have multiple days. So instead of being el día, we're going to make it plural to los días. 
And this is sort of a catchphrase that you'll sort of memorize with time. Totos those dias every day. Um, here's another example. Todas blank chicas de la clase son extrovertidas. All of the girls in the class are extroverted. So chicas, there's multiple girls, you know, because it has an S. They're all feminine, one because they're girls, and two because it ends in an AS. So all the girls, it should be todas las chicas. Okay, hopefully you have a pretty good feeling of how these work. Okay, so we've been talking about definite articles. Now we're going to move on to talk about indefinite articles. So um, indefinite articles are, in Spanish, un, una, unos, and unas. And unlike our definite articles, which we translated as the or the, our indefinite articles are going to be translated as a, for un and una, a, or some, for unos and unas, okay? In the same way that el and la are both singular, both un and una are singular, unos and unas are plural, as you can tell from the s on the end, um, and of course you can also view the ending where in which the a denotes that, uh, that these indefinite articles are feminine, as you see with una and unas. And then, of course, you have the O here with unos to let you know that that one is masculine. So be careful with those. Uh, we'll do some examples. These are the same ones that you saw before. You had a cuaderno to say the notebook. How would we say a notebook? Very good, very good. Un cuaderno, un cuaderno. You know this because cuaderno is masculine. It ends in an O. So we can narrow it down to the masculine column here. Uh, we know that there's only one notebook because there's no S, so it's going to be masculine and singular, so it should be un cuaderno. I'd like for you to take a moment, pause your audio, and give numbers two through five a try. Okay, awesome. Now that you've had a chance to try those, let's take a look. We have pluma, which is a pen. Uh, pluma ends in an A, so hopefully you denoted that it was feminine. Okay, there's only one pluma there, only one pen, so that it's both feminine and singular. And therefore, we should use una as our indefinite article. Okay, uh, here at number three, you have the word oso. And oso is a bear. And in this case, there's only one bear there. This ends in an O. Therefore, it is both masculine and singular. So to say a bear, we should say un oso. Okay. The same here for boligrafos, which ends in OS, masculine plural. Unos boligrafos. And for calculadoras, we should have unas calculadoras. Uh, again, you can kind of cheat here by looking at the ending. This one ends in an A, that must end in an A. This ends in OS, that must end in OS, so on and so forth. Okay, let's go back to those uh, examples that were a little tricky for you before. Um, señor, a mister or a sir, uh, one man we know is singular and masculine. To, to say a man, we're going to say un señor. A profesora, which is feminine singular, to have a professor, just one of them, we're going to say una profesora. Same thing with verdad, recall that verbs that end in ad, or excuse me, nouns that end in ad are feminine, so we should say a truth, una verdad, and then a problem, remember those ma, pa, ta nouns that are always masculine instead of feminine, a problem would be un problema, not una problema. Very careful, very common linguist error there. Okay, uh, on your exam, you may be asked to do something like this, where I give you a few sentences, and you have to go through and select either un, una, unos, or una. So let's take a look. Number one says, en la sala hay blank sillas negras. So in the living room, there are blank black chairs. Uh, sillas ends in A-S, so to say there are some black chairs, we are going to say unas sillas negras, and therefore it should be letter D. Take a moment, pause your audio, and give numbers 2, 3, and 4 a try. Okay, now that you've had a moment to try those, number 2 tells us that Don Quixote is blank libro fascinante. So we want to say that Don Quixote is a fascinating book. Libro ends in an O, therefore it's masculine and singular, and we should use un libro fascinante. 
I'm an interesting person. Yo soy una persona. Interesante. Notice persona ends in an A. This tricks people because they think, well, oh my gosh, the speaker's a man. I should use un, right? No, it doesn't work like that. The word persona, person, in Spanish is feminine. So a man is a persona and a woman is a persona. In this case, the word persona is feminine and singular, and therefore the indefinite article preceding it should be una persona. Okay? And last one, number four. In la pared, hay blank mapas de Estados Unidos. So on the wall, there are some maps of the U.S. Of course, we're only left here with unos. Uh, but you may recall that mapa, uh, those mapa words are always masculine. So you have unos mapas. Okay, we've covered quite a bit here. We're going to wrap up today's video with our final grammar topic discussing adjective forms, position, and agreement. So um, this is always the most interesting part for students who study Spanish, I think. And I always end up telling my students, well, you know, Spanish is a little backwards because we don't say that I am a tall man. We say that I am a man tall. We don't say that she's a pretty girl. We say that she's a girl pretty. Uh, in Spanish, we use what is called person first language. That is, you put the person first. You put um, the man before the tall. You put the um, student before the smart, so on and so forth. Uh, everything's a little backwards. That is that the noun, in this case, comes before the adjective, unlike in English, where the opposite is true. Uh, the other thing you need to know here is that adjectives also agree in gender and number with the noun that they modify. So, el profesor es malo, the professor is bad. In this case, I'm talking about one professor who is a male, and we're saying that he's bad, malo. Okay, let's change this exact same sentence. If I wanted to say that I was talking about a female professor, la profesora, she would not be malo. I would say la profesora es mala, okay, because I'm talking about a female professor, and therefore my adjective was, must be feminine and singular. Uh, another example, if you made that same sentence plural, the professor is bad, going back to the male professor, you could say that los profesores son malos. Again, I have multiple professors here, so they have to be malos instead of just malo. If I had las profesoras, multiple female professors, they would have to be malas. Okay. The same is true here. La estudiante es buena. It's la estudiante because we're referring to a female student. And she would be buena because, again, one person who is feminine. Multiple female students, las estudiantes son buenas. So it must agree in both gender and number. Okay. Um, here are some adjectives that you might use in real life to talk about yourself. We've used bueno and malo, good and bad. You have aburrido, boring. Perezoso, lazy, simpático, nice, and trabajador, hardworking. Okay, um, so I want to give you a few others to take a look at here. Now, in this case, there are some adjectives that end in dor, D-O-R, uh, and this is usually very common with like nationalities. Uh, to make these feminine, we're going to add an A, and you see this here with un hombre trabajador, a hardworking man. A hardworking woman would not be una mujer trabajador, but rather una mujer trabajadora, with an A there on the end. You can see the A listed here. Okay, uh, same thing with all of these. You can see that the adjective comes after the noun. El profesor de español. La estudiante española. So on and so forth. You also see lots of adjectives here that are cognates, or what we call lookalikes in more than one language. Exotico, introvertido, extrovertido, misterioso, fascinante, optimista, ideal, paciente, idealista, pesimista, impaciente, realista, inteligente, romántico, interesante, tímido. You can see these look like exactly what you would think in English. Exotic, introverted, extroverted, mysterious, fascinating, optimistic, so on and so forth. They look like the word um, that in English. They, they look the same. Okay, 
So I want to wrap up today by giving you an opportunity to practice with these adjectives. So you're going to see a sentence and you are going to have to make the adjective up here in bold agree. For example, number one says that los chicos no son altos. The boys are not tall. No son altos. Son blank. So the boys are not tall. They are. Well, you know the opposite of tall is short. The word for short is here, bajo. So I'm going to say, I bet los chicos no son altos. Los chicos son, and I bet I'm just going to put bajo here, right? No, unfortunately, that's not how that works. The boys are not altos. They have to be bajos. So notice, this ends in OS, this ends in OS, this ends in OS, and this ends in OS. They have to agree all the way across. Los chicos altos y bajos. All the way across, okay? Now look at number two. Uh, Señor H, no es desorganizado. Él es muy. So Mr. Harrison is not disorganized. He is very blank. Um, the opposite of disorganized would be organized, organizado. And I actually get to leave that here in my answer. I do not have to change it in any way because uh, I'm talking about Mr. Harrison, who is one male, and therefore I don't have to change it. Okay, I want you to give three, four, and five a try on your own. All right, now that you've had a second to try these, uh, number three tells us that a Madison le gusta practicar deportes. Madison likes to practice sports. She is very, um, and we're trying to say athletic here, which you see listed here to the left, atletico. So because I'm, because I'm talking about Madison, who is one female, I'm going to say that Madison is atletica, an A. Mackenzie likes to draw. We're going to say that she is not artistico, but artistica. Good, artistica. Okay, and our last one, Alantia Courtney, les gusta estudiar. They like to study. Therefore, they are people who are studious. Uh, so Lance and Courtney son not just estudioso, but because I'm talking about multiple people, one of whom is a male and one of whom is a female, I'm going to say that Lance and Courtney son estudiosos. Okay? Um, hopefully, you are feeling better about Espanol and Capítulo 1. Please remember that you have the option of going back and reviewing these videos as many times as you like. Uh, you can replay, you can work through the problems again, whatever is necessary for you to make sure that you understand these things. And of course, um, additional PowerPoints and resources will be provided for you on Canvas where you can get additional support as well. And uh, finally, if you have any questions, feel free at any point to drop me an email. We are always here to help you in any way that we can. Hope you have a great rest of your week.